Hi, I'm Carla Schroer with Cultural Heritage Imaging. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to build reflectance transformation images using the open source Relight Lab software. Relight Lab is going to replace RTI Builder. So those of you that have used RTI Builder, this is the new tool, this is where it's going. It has a number of improvements over RTI Builder and supports some additional file formats and so forth. You can work with highlight-based RTI, which is what most of you are likely to be doing. That's where we place reflective spheres in the images in order to collect our data. And also, if you already have a light position file from a dome, uh, for example, then uh, you can use that in this tool as well. If you want to learn about RTI and what it's about and how to collect the images, there are a lot of resources on the Cultural Heritage Imaging website and in the Cultural Heritage Imaging forums. But this video is just going to be about the Relight Lab software. So it will support multiple spheres, so you can get a more accurate calculation of your light position by using more than one sphere in your image. It does some correction for light fall off. It will build RTIs in the existing or legacy formats of polynomial texture maps, or PTM, uh, and also the hemispherical harmonics, or HSH form of RTI files. In addition to that, it builds a new format called Relight, which was specifically designed for web distribution of high-res images, and there are four algorithms you can choose to build that format. You can convert an existing RTI or PTM file to this new Relight format, so if you want to distribute that way over the web, you don't have to go find all the original images and rebuild the whole thing, you can just do a conversion. We can also export normal maps directly from uh, the software, and um, there's some additional features both in it now and also in the works. So currently, this is a collaboration between the Visual Computing Lab of CNR in Pisa and Cultural Heritage Imaging, where the Visual Computing Lab is really doing all of the software development, and that is based on well, years of working in RTI as well as producing the RTI viewer way back when. Um, and they're the ones that have developed this new Relight format. Federico Pancio is the primary developer for the tools. The Chi team is involved in doing software testing, defining user requirements, uh, kind of managing requests, answering questions. We are developing instructional materials like this video. We will be developing a proper user guide for the tool. There's very limited documentation for the tool right now. And I do want to thank the National Endowment for the Humanities, where we have a training grant that has a large component of uh, work in RTI, and we were able to use a small amount of grant funds to help support this work. The example I'm going to be showing you is from the University of Puerto Rico, Utuado, and it is of an incised stone that has glyphs on it. Uh, there are a few hundred of these stones in Puerto Rico, and we were there in March of 2022 to image the stones and also train people there how to do the RTI. So what, we're, what you want to do is go download the software and install it. Install installation is pretty straightforward. It's available for Mac, for Windows, and for um, Linux as well. So I have it installed on my Mac and I have it in my dock and I'm just going to click to start it. And this is the main interface right here. So uh, you have a row of icons. These are your most used items right here. There's a little bit of info in the I or info dialogue about the process, uh, but there is, there is no other documentation at this point. These items are also in the menus along with some additional items. So what we want to do, we have two options when we first bring up the software. We can start a new project, which is what I'm going to do in a moment, or 
if we have an existing uh, RTI image set that we have been processing, we can reload it and you know build additional RTIs, crop it differently, whatever we might want to do with it. So this button right here allows me to start a new project and it's going to prompt me to uh, give it a folder where I have JPEG images. Right now it only supports JPEG images, but that's something we're looking uh, to expand in the future. So uh, I give it a folder. That folder can be named whatever I want, but the contents of that folder has to be um, JPEGs that I want to use for building RTI. So I click open and here they are in the tool. And I can click on any image here and I can see it in the main window here on the right. I also have uh, buttons at the top that allow me to go uh, forward and back through it. And you can see here, oops, here's an image that got left in the image set by accident, but that we're not going to use to build the RTI. And it's really easy in this tool to just turn an image off or on so that you don't have to use it. So what we're going to do here is uh, there's a little X right here that if we click and you can see that X is off, that means uh, it's not going to use that image when it builds the RTI. Similarly, in this image set, I know that I have an image here at the end, which includes a shadow from the tripod. So the light was just not in a really good position. This is a tripod leg that's shadowing our subject. And that's not going to be helpful to our end result either. So we can turn that off. And this is a toggle, so we can always turn things back on again if we choose. So those images are turned off. What we want to do now is tell the software where the sphere, sphere or spheres are in our image so that it can calculate the light positions. So I'm going to zoom in to a sphere and I'm just using my trackpad. You can use your mouse wheel, you can uh, drag around. And then this button right here allows me to add a new sphere. And to define a sphere, I need to pick three points on the edge of the sphere. Okay, and then that defines a sphere. And if I zoom in, I can see you know, how good it is. One of the great things is that I can choose a different image because lighting from different positions may allow me to see an edge more easily in some images versus others. And you see I'm a little bit outside of the sphere here so uh, um, on this side. So I probably want to grab that one and just bring it in a little bit. Okay, So I can adjust those as needed. And then what I want to do is zoom in to my other sphere. And this is a good example where this particular image, it's not so easy to see the, the edges. Eh, too bad. Um, so if I click again to add another sphere, I can just get started with three. I can add more than three points. So if I have something that is not so round, it's a little bit ovoid, I can define the edges of that uh, as well. So um, it's, it is kind of useful to pick a couple images, make sure you've got a good, clean uh, view. So that's it. I've uh, told it where my spheres are, and now all I need to do is have it detect the highlights. So to do that, I go up to the Edit menu, and then I choose Find Highlights. So it's going to give me a progress bar telling me how it's doing with that, and it's finding the highlights uh, for both spheres in every uh, image that is in this image set. So it's almost done. There we go. And you may have noticed before that there was a little uh, red X in the middle before it detected the highlights. But now that it has detected the highlights, you can see a green X. And that green X is telling us exactly where the center of the highlight is for each image, for each sphere. So that pixel where the X comes together, the two lines of the X cross, is the pixel that's going to be used to generate the light position file. The software will also produce um, pictures of the highlight map or um, the sphere with all the images on them. In RTI Builder, this was called the blend map. And so we can look at those here and see this is all the images composited together from each of the of the two spheres. So that is available for you on your hard drive and it just it doesn't give you really an option it just automatically places them into the 
uh, same folder where you've loaded your, your images. So at this point, I could choose to save my project. That's not a bad idea. I can do that from here or from the file menu. And in that case, I just want to give it, uh, tell it where I want to, um, to save it. And uh, uh, it's going to make a, a dot .relight file for me that has all the information so that I wouldn't, if I load this project again, I don't have to do the spheres or the highlight detection. So I can click Save. In this case, I already had one, so I'm just replacing it. And um, I'm actually ready to build my RTIs now. So what I want to do is go to the Export menu and choose Export RTI. And what that's going to let me do is choose two different things. The first thing is what algorithm or what basis function do I want to use to calculate the RTI from this data. And you can see from this menu, you have a number of options. So the first two options are in, for PTMs. The first one is an LRGB PTM. The second one is an RGB PTM. Uh, and then well, I have two HSH options, the HSH 12 and the HSH 27. The HSH 27 is the second order HSH. Uh, those of you that are familiar with RTI Builder, that's a, what uh, we're going to get there. So that's actually what I'm going to choose at this point. And then we want to say, what format do uh, I want to produce? And uh, right now, I want to produce an RTI file. So it's going to make a .RTI file applying that algorithm. And I do want to crop this so that I crop in closer to the area I care about and get the spheres out of there. So if I click the crop uh, button here, I can just set the crop to whatever I need, okay? And if I, when I save the project again, it's gonna save this crop. So I can build as many different uh, RTIs as I want with the same crop area. So I'm gonna say, okay. So now I just click uh, build and it's gonna ask me, where do you want to save your file? So. I have a little test folder I've been working in, so we're just going to do that, and we're going to call this, um, you know, not a great name. Don't name your RTIs this, but just to show you how it works. So uh, it's going to add the .RTI extension itself. So it gives you a little bit of progress here as it's sampling the images and going through the images, and this will uh, show us when it's done. It will turn um, blue. And it's done. I can go on to the hard drive now, right where I told it to uh, to save the image, test. And remember, I called it test uh, stone. So that's the one that I just that I just built. Um, let me show you uh, one that's based in the relight format. So I go back to export RTI. I'm going to keep the same crop. This time I'm going to choose one of these algorithms, and there is information about what these things do. We're just not going to get into it in this video. So I am going to choose this uh, bilinear. I'm going to make it relight. Um, I can, I have some options here that are really about whether I want to prepare the images for zooming for the web. So it's going to make a lot of different tiled images. Um, for the, the web distribution. Um, I'm not going to do that right now because I'm not actually going to put this on the web, but you have the option to do that and you have the option to add the code that's necessary for the OpenLime um, viewer to make it easy for you to actually distribute your things uh, on the web. So I'm just going to do the basic relight one and say build. It's going to ask me where I want um, to do that. I'm going to go back up to this folder. I have a relight examples, and uh, I'm just going to make a um, bilinear uh, example. So uh, that's where I'm going to put it. I'm going to say save, and you'll see it builds it builds it pretty fast. Once it's done building it here, I have the option to look at it in the OpenLime viewer. That's an open source viewer that uh, 
knows how to work with relightable images uh, on the web and also with the tiling and zooming. I don't need to have a web server or anything. I can run it as a local file uh, from here, from the relight tool, relight lab tool. Um, and also I can, if I have already built one, I can open it from here as well. So if I click this icon, it's going to open it in my default web browser. And so now I can relight by moving uh, the light around. And uh, there we go. So here are my controls. So if I turn the relight off, then that means I'm in panning mode. If I turn the light bulb back on, then I can relight. And I also have the ability to choose, um, for example, a specular mode. Um, and then with relighting, I can get specular on the web. So more about some of these other uh, tools is available on uh, the website. So where do you find all of these things? So OpenLime, I just showed you an example of that. It was co-developed with another team in Italy, and it's a library that allows uh, these zoomable, relightable images over the web. So go to culturalheritageimaging.org slash downloads and you can find information on how to capture RTIs and the RTI viewer. The RTI builder is still there now, but we don't recommend that you use it. Um, we will be distributing Relight Lab uh, on our website in the future. Right now it's available from uh, GitHub. And if you go to this Relight page at the CNR, uh, for the CNR team, there are links to GitHub and there are also links to their research papers and other information about the tools. So thanks for watching.